The world stands on the brink of a revolution unlike anything humanity has witnessed before. A quiet inventor from Zimbabwe has shattered the chains of energy dependence with a machine that defies everything we thought possible. Maxwell Chikumbutso's self-powered car doesn't need fuel, charging stations, or even sunlight. It runs on what seems like pure innovation. While scientists and corporations debate the laws of physics, this vehicle silently glides down roads, untethered from the grid. Elon Musk's public acknowledgement of the invention sent shockwaves through industries built on the promise of batteries and fossil fuels. Suddenly, the future of transportation isn't being written in Silicon Valley or Detroit. It's emerging from an unexpected corner of the globe. For decades, perpetual motion was dismissed as fantasy, a violation of thermodynamics too absurd to entertain. Yet here it is, a car that moves without consuming, a machine that laughs in the face of conventional energy models. The implications stretch far beyond highways and garages. This could rewrite geopolitics, economics, and even the balance of global power. Oil-rich nations now face an existential threat as the very foundation of their wealth, energy dependence, crumbles beneath them. Automakers who bet everything on electric vehicles are scrambling to understand how their trillion-dollar investments became obsolete overnight. Universities that once mocked concepts like zero-point energy are now dissecting Chikambutso's work with nervous fascination. This isn't just a new engine. It's a key to unlocking energy independence for remote villages, disaster zones, and regions ignored by infrastructure. The invention exposes an uncomfortable truth. Innovation doesn't need permission from established institutions to change the world. While skeptics demand peer-reviewed papers, the car keeps moving, a silent rebuke to those who believe progress must follow predetermined paths. Elon Musk's endorsement wasn't just praise. It was a warning shot across the bow of every industry tied to energy scarcity. Battery manufacturers, charging networks, and lithium mines now face the same existential dread that once haunted coal companies. The vehicle's mystery lies not in what it contains, but in what it lacks. No fuel tank, no charging port, just relentless forward motion. Physicists whisper about quantum fluctuations and ambient energy harvesting, concepts once relegated to fringe science conferences. Meanwhile, in Zimbabwe, a generation of engineers watches as their nation shifts from being overlooked to becoming the epicenter of a technological earthquake. The car's simplicity is its most disruptive quality. It doesn't require massive infrastructure, just the courage to believe the impossible is possible. Energy monopolies that controlled nations through pipelines and power lines now face a future where their services become optional. Villages without electricity could leapfrog past power grids entirely, embracing mobility without waiting for wires to reach them. The invention forces a reckoning with our assumptions about scarcity, reminding us that abundance often emerges from the unlikeliest places. Chikambutso's background, a self-taught innovator working outside traditional research institutions, challenges the myth that breakthroughs require Ivy League labs. His story proves that sometimes, the greatest leaps come from those unburdened by the weight of conventional wisdom. The automotive industry's frantic pivot to electric vehicles now seems quaint compared to this paradigm-shattering alternative. Governments that built tax systems around gasoline sales must confront a future where energy slips through their fingers like sand. Military strategists are likely recalculating the importance of oil fields in a world where vehicles no longer depend on liquid fuel. The car's silent operation isn't just an engineering marvel. It's a metaphor for how revolutions often arrive without fanfare before changing everything. Climate change models may need revision as one of humanity's largest sources of emissions suddenly becomes optional. Urban planners who design cities around gas stations now imagine landscapes free from fossil fuel infrastructure. The invention raises profound questions about ownership. If energy becomes self-generating, who controls it? Chikambutso's work suggests that the next great technological leaps won't come from incremental improvements, but from rewriting the rules entirely. As laboratories worldwide attempt to replicate his results, the scientific method itself is being tested by an invention that shouldn't work, but does. The most shocking aspect isn't the technology. It's the realization that our understanding of physics might be incomplete. This car doesn't represent progress. It represents a fork in the road of human civilization. 
the ripple effects of Chikambutso's invention are only beginning to reveal their true scale and impact. Traditional power structures face an unprecedented challenge as energy decentralization becomes technologically feasible. Entire academic disciplines are being forced to revisit long-held assumptions about energy conservation and entropy. The geopolitical chessboard is being reset as oil-dependent nations scramble to diversify before their economies become relics. Automotive executives who dismissed the invention as impossible now quietly divert R&D budgets to understand its principles. Rural communities eye the technology with cautious hope, recognizing its potential to erase decades of infrastructure neglect overnight. The patent system trembles as corporations and governments debate how to classify an invention that defies existing frameworks. Climate activists find themselves unexpectedly allied with oil magnates, both groups stunned by a solution neither predicted. The military-industrial complex reevaluates logistics chains built around fuel convoys that may soon become unnecessary. Urban air quality projections shift dramatically as the specter of zero-emission transportation becomes tangible. Developing nations see an opportunity to bypass the fossil fuel era entirely, leapfrogging straight to energy autonomy. The very concept of refueling stations seems suddenly archaic like phone booths in the smartphone era. Traditional automakers face their Kodak moment. Will they adapt or become cautionary tales in business textbooks? University physics departments quietly update curricula to address phenomena their professors once dismissed as impossible. The investment world witnesses a gold rush as venture capitalists abandon battery startups for uncharted energy territories. Manufacturing supply chains shudder as demand forecasts for lithium, cobalt, and petroleum products nosedive. Energy economists tear up decades-old models that failed to account for the possibility of self-powering machines. The insurance industry recalibrates risk assessments as car fires, often linked to fuel systems or batteries, become rarer. Auto mechanics contemplate retraining as the internal combustion engine's twilight arrives sooner than anyone predicted. Petrostates accelerate sovereign wealth fund withdrawals, sensing their finite future more clearly than ever. Renewable energy advocates grapple with the irony of their solutions being disrupted by something even more radical. Traffic engineers reimagine cityscapes no longer dominated by gas stations and charging hubs. The shipping industry, long dependent on diesel, eyes the technology as a potential salvation from emissions regulations. Airlines study the physics, wondering if the principles could someday liberate aviation from liquid fuel. Homeowners imagine a future where their vehicles double as off-grid power sources during outages. Disaster response planners sketch scenarios where aid vehicles operate indefinitely without fuel supply chains. Astronauts ponder whether the technology could revolutionize space travel by solving propulsion challenges. Farmers visualize equipment that never needs refueling, working dawn till dusk without energy constraints. The developing world sees hope for ambulance fleets that won't be immobilized by empty tanks or power cuts. Remote schools anticipate buses that reliably transport children without depending on distant fuel supplies. Environmentalists cautiously celebrate while awaiting full life cycle analyses of the new technology. Tech giants monitor the space, wondering if energy innovations could disrupt cloud computing and data centers next. Philosophers debate whether human nature can handle abundance after centuries shaped by resource scarcity. Historians note the irony. While the West poured billions into incremental improvements, a breakthrough emerged from overlooked genius. The invention's greatest legacy may be proving that humanity's next chapter won't be written by institutions, but by individuals bold enough to rethink reality. Somewhere in Zimbabwe, a car keeps moving, its wheels turning not just on pavement, but on possibilities we're only beginning to understand. The world watches, adjusts, and prepares, because the future isn't coming anymore. It's already here. The true shockwave of Chikambutso's breakthrough isn't the technology itself. It's the psychological earthquake shaking humanity's belief systems. For centuries, civilizations measured progress by their ability to harness and control energy. Now that paradigm lies shattered on the workshop floor. The self-powered car doesn't just challenge mechanical engineering, it upends the philosophical foundations of modern economics built on scarcity. Energy economists stare at their supply-demand curves like ancient astronomers clinging to Earth-centric models after Copernicus. 
the psychological impact may outweigh the technological one, we've been conditioned to believe perpetual motion violates nature's laws. Yet here stands a machine that renders oil wars, pipeline politics, and energy. Sanctions sud en lire le vent. Geopolitical analysts whisper in secure rooms about how this single invention could neutralize Petrostate's leverage overnight. The CIA's Energy Security Division likely has wall-sized screens tracking this one Zimbabwean workshop with more intensity than Middle Eastern oil fields. Russia's energy weapon, its vast gas reserves used as political leverage, could become as strategically valuable as a stockpile of horse-drawn carriages. OPEC emergency meetings now discuss something far more terrifying than renewable energy, a future where no one needs their product at all. The U.S. Strategic Petroleum Reserve, that mammoth insurance policy against oil shocks, suddenly looks like a dinosaur awaiting extinction. Auto dealerships with acres of unsold combustion and electric vehicles face obsolescence faster than typewriter manufacturers in the 1980s. The psychological whiplash hits hardest in corporate boardrooms where trillion-dollar energy transition plans now appear tragically short-sighted. Legacy automakers' stock prices fluctuate wildly as investors realize their massive EV investments might be bridge technologies to nowhere. The lithium mining boom, touted as the next gold rush, could collapse faster than the market for whale oil in the 19th century. Gas station franchise owners watch traffic counts with mounting dread, knowing their businesses may soon resemble abandoned video rental stores. The ripple effect extends beyond energy. Imagine roads without gas stations, convenience stores without fuel sales, economies without energy-driven inflation. Trucking companies salivate at eliminating their single largest cost, diesel fuel, from balance sheets forever. The military-industrial complex recalibrates war game scenarios where fuel convoys, historically vulnerable targets, no longer exist. Naval strategists reconsider aircraft carrier groups designed around nuclear reactors when ships might someday harness self-sustaining power. Astrophysicists dust off speculative papers about deep space propulsion that academia previously mocked as impossible. The invention exposes how institutional science often defends orthodoxy more vigorously than it pursues truth. Tenured physics professors who spent careers ridiculing free energy claims now quietly assign graduate students to replicate Chikambutso's work. Peer-reviewed journals face existential crises, their gatekeeping role undermined by a working prototype that cares nothing for academic approval. The scientific method itself gets stress-tested as reproducible results trump theoretical objections in the real world. Religious leaders grapple with sermons about mankind's dominion over nature when a machine seemingly bends physical laws. Ethicists convene emergency panels to discuss whether humanity can handle such power without self-destruction. Psychologists study how populations conditioned to energy scarcity will adapt to potential abundance. Will we hoard or share? Urban planners erase gas stations from future city designs while imagining parks where fueling infrastructure once stood. Real estate agents recalculate property values near refineries and pipelines now facing potential obsolescence. Insurance actuaries tear up risk models as car fires, historically linked to flammable fuels, become statistical anomalies. Fire departments reconsider hazmat protocols when vehicle accidents no longer risk gasoline explosions or battery chemical fires. Environmental agencies recalibrate air quality projections with transportation emissions potentially vanishing within years. Climate models undergo radical revisions as one of humanity's largest carbon sources could disappear almost overnight. The invention's timing seems cosmically poetic, arriving as climate change accelerates and energy wars escalate. Developing nations denied industrialization by colonial energy monopolies now glimpse a path to leapfrog the fossil fuel era entirely. Remote clinics in Africa could receive medicine via self-powered drones that never need charging stations. Pacific Island nations facing sea level rise might power evacuation fleets without waiting for foreign fuel shipments. The Arctic's melting shipping lanes become less strategically vital if fuel stops no longer dictate maritime routes. The geopolitical chessboard resets faster than during the transition from sail to steam or coal to oil. Historians will likely mark this as the moment when energy ceased being a strategic commodity and became a solved problem. Economists struggle to model scenarios where energy, historically a finite resource, becomes effectively infinite for transportation. 
Inflation models built around energy costs require complete overhaul when fuel expenses disappear from household budgets. Central banks recalculate monetary policies once tethered to oil price fluctuations that may soon become irrelevant. The petrodollar system, that fragile arrangement propping up global finance, faces its most credible threat since inception. Goldman Sachs analysts likely work through the night recalculating every energy-dependent investment thesis in their vaults. War colleges rewrite military strategy manuals where securing energy supplies dominated campaign planning for a century. The Pentagon's logistics core, that massive apparatus ensuring fuel reaches every global outpost, could shrink dramatically. Special forces operatives imagine missions without extraction worries when vehicles never run out of power. The invention's elegance lies in its simplicity. No complex infrastructure required, just a machine that works. Unlike fusion reactors or megadams requiring billions in investment, this technology could scale village by village. The psychological liberation may surpass the technological. Imagine never worrying about gas prices, charging times, or power outages. Road trips no longer require route planning around charging stations or fuel stops, just endless open highways. The morning commute transforms when drivers never glance at fuel gauges or battery indicators again. Disaster resilience improves exponentially when emergency vehicles operate indefinitely without refueling. Humanitarian aid reaches war zones and disaster areas without fuel supply chains that often fail when most needed. The invention democratizes mobility in ways Henry Ford could never have imagined with his assembly lines. Farm equipment running continuously could revolutionize agricultural output in developing nations. Electric grids, historically overloaded by EV charging demands, get unexpected breathing room. Renewable energy investments pivot from transportation to focus solely on industrial and residential needs. The psychological shift mirrors humanity's transition from believing the sun revolved around Earth to understanding heliocentrism. We stand at the precipice of redefining what's possible, not through incremental steps but by a fundamental rewrite of rules. The greatest resistance comes not from technical challenges but from minds unwilling to accept that reality just changed. Bureaucracies designed to regulate energy systems now scramble to categorize something outside their frameworks. Lawmakers draft emergency legislation about liability, safety, and ownership for technology that defies existing statutes. Patent offices worldwide debate how to protect an invention that could belong to humanity rather than any corporation. Ethics committees convene to discuss whether such technology should be open source or commercially controlled. The Vatican's Pontifical Academy of Sciences likely holds closed-door sessions about the moral implications. The Dalai Lama's Twitter feed probably features unexpected commentary on energy and interconnectedness. A new generation of physicists emerges, unshackled from dogma that limited their predecessor's imagination. Engineering students now demand curriculum updates reflecting what's possible rather than what's traditionally accepted. The breakthrough's timing, amid climate crisis and energy wars, feels like providence to spiritual observers. Skeptics still demand peer-reviewed papers while the car continues moving, an unassailable argument in motion. The ultimate test isn't academic approval but real-world performance, and by that measure, it's already succeeding. Investment floods into Africa not as charity but as recognition of untapped innovative potential. The brain drain reverses as diaspora scientists return home to participate in an energy renaissance. History may remember this as the moment global South innovation eclipsed Northern technological hegemony. The invention's beauty lies in its defiance, not just of physics, but of prejudiced assumptions about where breakthroughs originate. Children worldwide see that world-changing ideas can come from anywhere, even their own garages. The psychological liberation may ultimately prove more valuable than the technology itself. Humanity stands taller today, not because we mastered nature, but because we realized how little we truly understood. The car keeps moving. The world keeps watching. The future keeps unfolding, whether we're ready or not.